welcome to the Resident Evil Timeline Part 2, City of the Dead. In Part 1, we saw the rise of the Umbrella Corporation and the origins of the T-Virus as it was unleashed by one of its own creatures in July of 1998 and infected the entire staff and mansion designed to hide its very existence. And in a night of pure terror, the Star's Alpha and Bravo teams were decimated, leaving only Chris Redfield, Jill Valentine, Rebecca Chambers, Barry Burton, and their pilot Brad Vickers surviving the night. After returning home to Raccoon City, Rebecca turned in her report detailing the events of the night and claimed that Billy Cohen had died in the incident. The remaining STARS members immediately confronted their chief, Brian Irons, with the truth behind the incident, but he was suspiciously dismissive. As they argued with him, and he refused to believe such a thing had happened. In reality, Chief Irons had been in communication with William Birkin for years, and Umbrella had been bribing him to keep any suspicions of wrongdoing away from them. Irons immediately shut down STARS and dissolved the team entirely, but Chris had a hunch that the Chief knew more than he let on. It seemed Umbrella had gotten away with their crimes, but if their own legal system wouldn't take Umbrella down, the ex-STARS members decided to do it themselves. Chris decided to leave Raccoon City to investigate Umbrella's operations in Europe, and Barry promised to meet him there, but first moved his family out to Canada, out of Umbrella's reach to ensure their safety, returning to Raccoon City after they were safe. Rebecca left the city to pursue a different career path, and Jill stayed, keeping tabs on the mayor and any possible hints of Umbrella activity. Before leaving, Chris contacted the FBI and reported Chief Iron's corruption, and the Chief, knowing that he was under suspicion, started becoming unhinged, behaving erratically and suffering from paranoia. Throughout late August and early September, his behavior became so unstable that he started giving in to dark temptations that he had for years, secretly stalking blonde females and murdering a total of eight young women between the ages of 18 and 23. Umbrella had much to be concerned about besides a corrupt police chief that was now beyond their control. Wesker, after having escaped the mansion incident, knew Umbrella secrets were about to come spilling out, and took his knowledge to Umbrella's rival company, the organization. Although he wasn't able to get combat data from the tyrant that Stars destroyed, he did attain combat data from the other bioweapons that his ex-teammates fought, securing a high-ranking command position within the organization. After the Spencer Mansion outbreak, William Birkin moved all his work to an underground lab on the outskirts of Raccoon City, and continued his G-Virus research in secret. His obsession with the G-Virus had taken over his life, and his wife Annette Birkin, also a brilliant Umbrella scientist, was assisting him in perfecting it, while their young daughter Sherry spent most of her time alone, barely seeing her parents anymore. And Birkin, knowing that Wesker had left Umbrella, decided to take measures of his own to ensure that his life's work would pay off, deciding to contact the US military and offering to leave Umbrella and sell them the G-Virus. A decision that would trigger a war zone and days of pure chaos within Raccoon City. But Umbrella had spies everywhere and quickly learned of his betrayal. The company immediately ordered their Umbrella Security Service, also known as the USS, an elite paramilitary force trained in their Rockford Island facility, to find William Birkin and retrieve the virus before the military could get their hands on it. The USS sent in two teams to retrieve the virus, Alpha Team led by the mysterious operative hunk nicknamed Mr. Death due to his uncanny ability to survive the deadliest missions unscathed, and Delta Team, a deadly group that referred to themselves as Wolfpack. Alpha Team geared up to infiltrate Birkin's lab, and Wolfpack prepared to assist them as backup. But Birkin knew that Umbrella would send the USS and hire protection of his own. Being an ex-Umbrella employee, he used his position within the company to hire soldiers from the UBCS, the Umbrella Biohazard Countermeasure Service, a group founded by Sergei Vladimir, mostly comprised of mercenaries specializing in rescue operations, men whose primary motivation was money. With the fate of the G-Virus in their hands, the USS teams moved in on Birkin and his UBCS protection. You guys must be the new Delta team. Report. Split third here. All set. My name is Bertha. Ready to play. Vector here. Good to see you again, sir. Call me Lupo, Delta Team Squad Leader. Command, I've rendezvoused with Delta Team. Understood. Now find Birkin and secure those samples. Failure is not an option. You heard him. Let's move. Welcome to Umbrella. All right. Weapons live. We're ready for action.
Don't forget your training. If they get too close, use hand-to-hand -hand combat. Guard this door. Do not let anyone approach. You, come with me. There he is. So you finally come. Doctor, we're here to collect the G-Virus sample. Sorry, but I won't just hand over my life's work. Acquired all the G samples. Mission completed. William. Oh my. Hold on, darling. I'm taking care of that bullet wound first. Stay here. Gee. My creation will save me. Birkin injected himself with G-Virus to save his life, Alpha Team left with the samples, as U.S. military forces arrived to collect, and Wolfpack stayed behind to provide cover. But the virus worked quickly in Birkin's body, and the mutation made him a mindless hulking beast, as Wolfpack encountered the horrifying creature. Injected himself with the G virus. There's nothing you can do. Get out of here and make a full report to management. What about you, sir? I lost the sample. I'm going back for it. Hunk stayed behind to fend off Birkin and collected the G virus sample successfully, escaping with the remaining members of Alpha Team into the sewers. But Birkin, with his humanity quickly slipping away, followed closely. I'm stopping it! What is this thing? Hurry! What, what is this thing? Fire! Fire! You son of a... All communications from Alpha Team and Hunk ceased. Umbrella presumed their death, and ordered Wolfpack back to base for a debrief, knowing there was a disastrous emergency at hand. During Birkin's rampage, the T-Virus had spilled throughout Birkin's lab and the sewers under Raccoon City, as rats fed on it, becoming infected and spreading it into the city's water supply. And William Birkin, in his mutated form, roamed the sewers with the sole purpose of breeding. Over the next couple of days, much of the Raccoon City population was unknowingly infected. Isolated reports of violence began happening frequently, similar to the attacks being reported that summer in the Arclay Mountains. As the violence increased in the city, the Raccoon City police were out in full force, responding to emergencies, including a riot in the local football stadium during a Raccoon Sharks game. One infected person turned and sent multiple victims to Raccoon General Hospital, spreading virus throughout the population even faster. 
Raccoon City's fate was sealed. Wesker, keeping track of what was happening in the city, recognized all too well the symptoms of T-Virus infection, and his role in the organization placed him in command of Ada Wong, the same agent that had infiltrated Umbrella before the Spencer Mansion incident. And Wesker ordered Ada to go into the city and retrieve a sample of the G-Virus, Annette Birkin, knowing that her husband had injected himself with the G-Virus and the T-Virus was spreading, hid a sample of the G-Virus inside her daughter Sherry's locket to keep it safe, and sent the young girl to the Raccoon City Police Department where she'd be safe. And one evening, evening, after an exhausting shift, Raccoon City Police Officer Kevin Ryman went to drink at his favorite bar as the city finally lost control. The number of injured is not yet zombies outside poured into the bar, and Kevin led some of the survivors upstairs and to the roof to escape the incoming horde, as the police down below in the streets attempted to contain the situation. But even the police were quickly overrun, and Kevin and the survivors had to fight for their lives, as the police barricades surrounding them fell. Go! Brace yourself! <laughs> <laughs> Realizing that the chaos in the city was only increasing, Kevin's police instincts kicked in, and he became the leader of a small group of survivors, keeping them safe and determined to escape the hellish city, picking up more along the way. so long. Hurry up! I'm trying! I'm almost done! Ah! Hurry! Hurry! This way! Okay, it's done! Eric! Ah! <laughs>
The group desperately ran through the streets looking for a safe location and found their way into the local hotel, the Apple Inn, where a gas line soon exploded, causing the hotel to break out into an uncontrollable fire. Hey, is anybody there? Len, you take downstairs. What's that? It's gonna blow! As the zombies made their way inside, it was clear the hotel was no longer safe. As they made their way room to room, searching for a way out, eventually ending up in the hotel lobby, were suspended waited. A bizarre mutation of zombie and liquor. As the citizens of Raccoon City faced an onslaught of infected, as morning came, the U.S. government blockaded the city in an effort to keep the infection from spreading, while at the same time covering up their own involvement with Umbrella, keeping the rest of the world in the dark. Yesterday, just before dawn, the Pentagon announced that radioactive waste has been leaked throughout Raccoon City. In accordance with U.S. safety regulations, the city has been placed under quarantine and the army has been sent in to investigate and control the situation. That evening, a waitress called Cindy, traveling with Kevin's group, found a note claiming that a rescue chopper would be coming, but they would have to cross the Raccoon City Zoo not knowing that the virus also affected plants and animals, making them into bloodthirsty carnivorous beasts. Raccoon City Zoo's main attraction, Oscar the Elephant, had become infected, breaking out of his enclosure and rampaging through the zoo, unleashing hyenas, lions, and other wildlife. Kevin and his group were successful in finding their way out of the zoo, but Oscar the Elephant could not be contained. Taking a cable car to their destination, they discovered that the chopper had crashed, and all hope drained from their bodies, as communications began to break down in the city, and emergency services were stretched their limits. The the National Guard continue their efforts to keep the chaos in the city under some semblance of control. Their mission is proving to be important. Even the most Seen a lot.
lot of RPD and civilian activity in the downtown area. Team 5 reporting. Gunfire near the hospital. Understood. Move to contain. Ma'am, please calm down. What is the nature of the emergency? Get in the window. At this time, it was clear to Umbrella that there was no hope left in containing the outbreak, and their prime objective became to cover up any evidence of their involvement. Umbrella deployed the USS Wolfpack team once again on a mission known as Operation Raccoon City, sending them into the zombie-infested city to search for any evidence that tied Umbrella to the outbreak and destroy it. Umbrella also sent in members of their mercenary UBCS force, acting as the public face of their military with the narrative that they were trying to rescue civilians. Many UBSC members believed they were actually doing good work, but in reality they were simply expendable soldiers used to create a positive public image. And along the way on their mission, Wolfpack met a man named Nikolai, a sergeant within the UBCS and close friend of Sergei Vladimir, both having served together in the Russian military. Although the rest of the UBCS were under orders to rescue civilians, he had secret orders of his own from above, including the order to monitor the monsters in the city to determine their capability as weapons of war, no matter what the cost and at the price of his own men's lives. With that orders, let's move. All the best with your mission. Check out that monitor. Looks like a security feed from earlier today. That's Nikolai and his team. Isn't that against company policy? Completing his mission would ensure an enormous payday from Umbrella. As Wolfpack fought their way through City Hall, they encountered U.S. military forces sent into the city, desperately trying to contain the outbreak. Successfully destroying any potential evidence in City Hall, Wolfpack was faced with an enormous infestation of Umbrella's liquors, and Nikolai used them as a distraction so he can escape. What the hell's wrong with you, Nikolai? Why'd you off your whole day? <laughs> they served their purpose most excellently. Just as you. God damn it, Nikolai! Get back here! In another part of the city, Officer Kevin Lyman and his group of survivors, after having failed to escape via chopper, took shelter in the subway of the city, where they believed there may be some safety from the chaos above, but instead found dark tunnels infested with enormous megabytes, T-virus infected fleas that grew to immense sizes, as another subway tram came crashing through. As Kevin and the group prepared to leave via the other tram, they discovered where the megabytes were all coming from, the queen flea and mother, known as the gigabyte. The T-virus had changed the behavior of the fleas to act as a hive, protecting their mother, and the group's only hope for escape was to kill the gigabyte. Escaping via the subway, the survivors took it to the city limits, deciding to walk away from the city and attempt an escape through the Arclay Mountains, where they discovered that the forest was far too dangerous, also infested with zombies, and took shelter in a cabin. The cabin's owner told the group he knew of an old road that led to the neighboring town, but there was an abandoned hospital nearby blocking it. Unknown to them, the T-virus had infected the plant life in the area, fusing into the zombies, creating poisonous creatures not found within the city and the cabin owner was actually a man named Al Lester, leading them to their doom. Lester was once the director of the abandoned hospital, and used Umbrella's T-virus experiments to cure his wife of cancer. But while she was cured of cancer, the T-virus ended her life, 
and Lester was devastated. During the Raccoon City outbreak, an enormous plant grew to consume the entire hospital and absorbed his wife's body, causing Lester to go mad and believing the plant was his wife reborn and taking on the persona of the Axeman, feeding victims to the plant and becoming invulnerable himself from its toxins. Within the hospital, Kevin and his group found syringes filled with a fluid that can harm the giant plant and used it to weaken it, while escaping the repeated attacks from the Axeman and confronting the main structure of the plant. collapsed and the survivors knew the path through the forest was simply a ruse to get them into the hospital. There was no safe way through the Arclay Mountains. Heading back into the city, Kevin led the group to the Raccoon Police Department, the only place he thought might still be safe. And in the underground parking lot, one of the survivors, George Hamilton, a leading surgeon from Raccoon General Hospital, found a letter made out to him. A colleague of his, Dr. Peter Jenkins, was a researcher at Raccoon University nearby and claimed to have crucial knowledge only he would understand. Kevin decided it was worth escorting the group into the university and find out what was so important during this crisis. Inside, they found the body of Peter having been shot in the back of the head, betrayed by an umbrella scientist named Greg Miller, who had helped him develop the Daylight Antivirus, a serum that was capable of destroying the T-virus infection within the body. He helped develop Daylight as a way to protest Umbrella. The company had been manufacturing tyrants and Dr. Mueller was angered by this, claiming that it took away the beauty of a single unique killing machine, developing his own unique tyrant named Thanatos. Umbrella, being completely aware that Dr. Mueller had gone rogue, sent a UBCS team to retrieve or kill the tyrant and bring back its remains, as the doctor unleashed it. These 9mm are useless. Almost got him. Hold on! Calm down. You must give me your blood. Hey, something's wrong. Sir, let's regain our distance then. What the? You! Impressive. I won't underestimate it next time. It must be going to the man. Might as well set it up. Just in case. Nikolai had extracted a blood sample from the creature, and the T-virus infected blood happened to be a necessary component to the daylight serum. Kevin and the group studied Dr. Jenkins' notes and set out to find all the necessary components, and encountered the Thanatos tyrant determined to take its T-virus infected blood for the serum. Come on! After taking some of the serum, the group was now free of any potential viral infection and made sure there was still enough to analyze for future use. And while escaping the creature once again, they met its maker, who wanted to test out his monster, but he would not have the chance to see it through. Nikolai was in the area and had rigged the university to explode. Farewell.
chopper in the neighborhood was looking for survivors as they were forced to fend off Thanatos in a final confrontation against the beast. Having killed the creature, some of the survivors successfully escaped with the chopper and took the daylight antivirus with them, ensuring it could be studied. Unfortunately, the chopper didn't have enough room for everybody, so Kevin and half of his group selflessly decided to stay behind and find another way out of the city. But that evening, the situation would get even worse. Umbrella knew the police force was more active than ever in the city and needed to ensure that no information could get out that could implicate them, and ordered Wolfpack to take out the city's power grid with EMP generators. Generators that were set to be delivered by Chopper on the roof of the hospital. Wolfpack rushed out of the hospital into zombie-filled streets and fought for their survival against the hordes and U.S. Special Forces in their way. Eventually, they found Nikolai bunkered down in the clock tower, and he revealed that he had been given access to their communication channel by his contact with an umbrella and had been listening to them this entire time as he sniped them from the building taking cover. The USS was given strict orders to disengage their battle with Nikolai as a rogue UBCS member was not a priority and commanded them to find another way to disable the power grid. Eventually making it to the power plant, the US military took a stand against Wolfpack, trying to keep the city's power grid active, but Wolfpack was successful in planting bombs on the city's main generators, leaving much of Raccoon in the dark. Good. The power grid's down. Our job's done. No need to keep fighting. Leave those bastards in the dark. Umbrella knew the biggest danger to their existence were the STARS members that survived the mansion incident, still alive somewhere within the city, and the company activated their most powerful bioweapon of the time, the Nemesis, an unstoppable creature with regenerative capabilities they had programmed to hunt down the remaining STARS members specifically. But the monster was out of control and refusing to follow commands, and Wolfpack was ordered to put it back under Umbrella control. To do that, they had to infiltrate a nearby Umbrella facility and extract a parasite that was used on Tyrants to force them to neurologically follow orders. Inside the facility, they fended off the infected along with an outbreak of parasites, finding a deactivated Model T-103 Tyrant, otherwise known as Umbrella's Mr. X variant, a powerhouse of muscle that had a control parasite inside of it. Wolfpack successfully extracted the parasite needed to repair the nemesis and ran, aware that the Mr. X Tyrant would awaken and attack anyone in its path. Since the control parasite was removed. After successfully escaping the facility, they found their target, the out-of-control nemesis engaged in battle against the US military. And the group needed to take the creature down in order to inject the parasite and ensure that Umbrella regained its control. Come <laughs> on. 
Nemesis back under control, Umbrella reissued its orders, hunt down and destroy any remaining STARS members within the city. In another part of the city, Officer Kevin Lyman and the group of survivors left with him returned to the safety of the Raccoon City Police Department after leaving the university grounds, and now found it in a state of chaos. Chief Irons, paranoid that he was infected, was determined to take the entire police force down with him, and began issuing conflicting commands to officers, purposely causing confusion and moving weapons caches to inconvenient locations, where it would be difficult for officers to reach them. Seeing that the chief had obviously lost his mind, Officer Marvin Branagh took command and gathered the surviving officers inside the police department, inspiring them and creating an escape plan with Kevin and the others. But Marvin was tragically bitten. As the barriers around the police department fell, Kevin and his group mounted a final defense as help was on its way. Marvin was the only police officer left inside the department and heroically stayed behind, refusing to put his colleagues in danger. While the survivors drove through the streets in a police transport, the city descended further and further into chaos, and the U.S. military sent in their own personal special operations team, known as Echo 6, to find out exactly what was going on in the city and the exact nature of the outbreak. No communications were coming from within, and Echo 6 were ordered to get to the police department and make contact with local authorities. Echo 6 knew there was some sort of violent outbreak in the city, but were completely unprepared for the sheer scale of the infection found within. Also running into Umbrella forces sent in to cover up evidence and wipe out survivors. As Echo 6 neared the police station, the final remainder of the Raccoon City Police Force unleashed everything it had left in a final assault against the zombie hordes, as mercenaries of the UBCS struggled to survive in the streets as they looked for survivors. What are they? No! Raccoon City Police Department was decimated. The civilians left alive inside the city were now completely on their own. Raccoon City was now truly a city of the dead. Jill Valentine, the ex-STARS member still within the city, prepared to escape, having lost complete communication with her fellow STARS members. Grabbing her weapons, she left the apartment building as it was being engulfed in a raging fire.
Jill made her way through the streets, taking out any infected that crossed her path as she searched for some sort of way out of the city. But most of the streets were either infested with monsters or blocked off completely by debris and barricades. Eventually, she found her way into a bar where she found her fellow teammate Brad, warning her of the nemesis that Umbrella had unleashed. Brad, hang in there. Why isn't someone doing something about this? I didn't know you were still alive, Jill. The police aren't trained for this kind of situation. What could they do? Listen, he's coming for us. We're both gonna die. What are you saying? You'll see. He's after STARS members. There's no escape! Jill's first thought after meeting with Brad was to head to the police department and see who was left that can help, not knowing that it had completely fallen already and been overrun by zombies. And on the way, she encountered the terrifying nemesis that Brad was so afraid of. Uh, Jill! Jill! Uh, Brad! We've got a... In order to escape, Jill entered the police department, constantly being pursued by the nemesis, behaving exactly as Umbrella intended it to, with the single goal of wiping out stars and covering their tracks. Still being pursued by nemesis, Jill left the police department and encountered Echo 6, warning them to run. Slow it down. We gotta keep moving. Wait, who are you? Jill Valentine. I used to be with Stars. Let me guess. That creature is one of Umbrella's creations. Yeah, we're not exactly Umbrella's favorite people. We've been investigating some of their more questionable activities for a while now. Command, are you getting this? She's part of the RPD Special Tactics and Rescue Service. She checks out, but you are not to share your mission objective with her. Where are you headed? Out of town. You should do the same. Not quite yet, love. We've civilians to rescue first. There are no survivors. They're all dead. And you guys don't look like any rescue team I've ever seen. Look, I can't stay. But if whoever's holding your leash cares about what happened here, I'd start with City Hall. You'll find intel on Umbrella there. But if I were you, I'd get out of Raccoon City while you still can. Following Jill's advice, Echo 6 set out to City Hall. After the police barricades failed citywide and Kevin and his group of survivors found themselves stranded with nowhere to go after crashing and hid inside the closest building, Raccoon General Hospital, where they were continuously stalked by a doctor that had been absorbed by T-virus infected leeches. It seemed like nowhere left in the city was safe. Kevin and his group were able to find an underground passageway leading to the sewers, believing this could be the way out finally, but the speedboat they discovered was blocked by a giant infected leech blocking their path.
killing the monster, they followed the sewers down, not realizing that Umbrella had built their secret laboratories underneath the city. As they followed the maze of paths in the sewers, Kevin and the group accidentally stumbled into Umbrella's primary Raccoon City facility, where a high-speed train was located to evacuate Umbrella employees. But the train was powered down, and in the facility they encountered an Umbrella researcher named Monica, who had a history working alongside one of the survivors, Yoko Suzuki, a young woman suffering from memory loss, slowly regaining her memories piece by piece. Knowing Umbrella was finished, she murdered a fellow co-worker and stole a G-larva, creatures created by the G-virus that could impregnate hosts and replicate, intending to sell it to the highest bidder. Monica rushed off after encountering the survivors in an attempt to find another route since the train wasn't working. Making their way through the facility, they discovered the insane experiments that Umbrella had been creating, and Kevin collected evidence along the way he knew could implicate Umbrella later. But they also had to find a way out as a giant plant similar to Plant 42 in the Spencer Mansion blocked their way up. They had also discovered documentation teaching them how to make the chemical that could kill the plant, and they used it to clear the path. Finding the main area of the underground lab, they discovered it completely frozen, and the temperature was dropping more and more, due to experiments in the facility failing throughout the outbreak. Passing by frozen hunters along the way, they eventually discovered a platform they could use to escape platform like everything else was frozen. They eventually did discover a way to warm up the lab and the ice melted, but at the same time this unleashed the frozen hunters that were now waking up from hibernation. As they prepared to escape, the very same G larva that Monica was trying to steal escaped from its confines and entered her body as she gave birth to a new G virus mutated creature. As they successfully destroyed the monster, Kevin, Yoko, and the rest of the survivors escaped but had no idea where this train would be taking them. After Echo 6 held back Nemesis, they were ordered to reach City Hall and find the intel that Jill was telling them existed, and on the way they found a UBCS soldier, knowing he could possibly have important information. The soldier was a man named Carlos Oliveira, believing that Umbrella was genuinely trying to rescue people during the outbreak. Carlos, thanks for saving my ass. No problem. Are you alone? No, but I got split up for my team at City Hall. We were trying to rescue civilians. Funny. We were just on our way there. Last I heard, some soldiers were rolling through, setting explosives all over the place. Sounds like it's a party worth crashing. You go and find something. <laughs> After Carlos' revelation that Umbrella soldiers were setting explosives in City Hall, it was clear that the building had information Umbrella did not want to get out. And Echo 6 found Umbrella troops fighting back hard to keep them away from the building. Inside City Hall, Echo 6 discovered a blueprint for an unknown Umbrella facility within the city, and were ordered to find and infiltrate it. While they set out to locate the entrance, Jill, still avoiding the nemesis, ran into Carlos in a local restaurant. What's that? Calm down, lady. I'm no zombie. My name's Carlos. 
Corporal of Umbrella's Biohazard Countermeasure Force. What's your name? Jill, did you just say you belong to Umbrella's army? Yeah. We came all the way out here to save you civilians. But the mission went bad the minute we landed. Wait! How did he find me? Over here! Are you crazy? You could have barbecued both of us! I need to ask you something. Why did Umbrella send your team here? Our mission is to rescue the civilians. How kind of you. Considering Umbrella caused all this in the first place, those liars! Look, we're just mercenaries, hired hands. No time for talking. If you can believe me, then join us. Think about it! After the restaurant, Jill followed Carlos to a cable car in need of repair that she could potentially use to get out of the city, and inside she met some more survivors. It was Nikolai, and another wounded soldier named Mikhail. Jill and Carlos both trusted Nikolai and had no idea that he was a man looking out for himself, willing to sacrifice the very soldiers he was in charge of in order to escape the city. Carlos and Jill decided to work together, as he set out to find equipment and weapons they may need later, and Jill searched for parts to repair the tram. As Jill continued her search, she found Nikolai having just killed a fellow UBCS soldier, and she was instantly suspicious over his motives. What did you do? I had no choice. He was about to turn into a zombie. It would have been a threat, so I eliminated it. But he was still conscious, wasn't he? He was as good as dead. And it took fewer bullets to kill him now than it would have if he had transformed. With all the parts in hand needed to repair the tram, Carlos and Jill met up and prepared to escape. Mikhail! Mikhail! After the nemesis attacked, they ended up at the clock tower, and Carlos realized that he was completely expendable as part of the UBCS. Angered that his superiors had abandoned them, Jill and Carlos knew they had to find a way to attract attention to their location so the local UBCS choppers could come get them. Jill made her way through the building, figuring out how to activate the clock tower, and making it ring loudly, and help finally came. But escape would not be so easy. It's finally over. Huh? Oh. Oh. chasing down Jolie. Carlos is there too. We must help them. Ask command for permission. Command. Echo 6 requesting permission to aid Jill and Carlos. Request denied. Your mission is not to rescue survivors. Come on, they helped us. We must return the favor. Okay, make it quick. This is not your objective. Echo 6 had seen the explosion nearby, and knew it involved Jill and Carlos, requesting permission to help them. Command gave them permission to help, and they rushed to the scene of the helicopter crash, as Jill fought desperately against the nemesis.
Is she alright? She's hurt. Take her! We will cover you! Thanks. Good luck. Echo 6 successfully drew away the nemesis and defeated it, allowing Carlos to escape with the wounded Jill, staying by her side and waiting for her to wake up. The USS Wolfpack team in another part of the city received new orders. They knew Police Chief Irons had lost his mind and was an incredible liability. Ordering Wolfpack to gather any information he had and wipe out any remaining police found inside the building. At the same time, a young woman named Claire Redfield arrived in Raccoon City. Most of the few military left alive were inside, and many of the blockades that were set up just outside the city had been evacuated and dismantled already, as the military monitored the situation from a distance. Claire was the younger sister of Chris Redfield, and had been trying to contact him without success, not knowing that he had already left for Europe. Worried about him and hearing that something was going on inside Raccoon, she went in to find him. And on the other side of the city, a young police officer named Leon S. Kennedy had recently joined the Raccoon City Police Department and was reporting for his first shift, completely unaware of the chaos that was waiting inside. Man, what a mess! What could have done this? What was that? What are these things? All right, that's far enough. Don't move! Don't move. No! Uh, hello. Look, I'm sorry I bothered you, okay? Just don't come any closer. Are you listening? can't stay out here. Head to the police station. It'll be a lot safer. There! Buckle up. Okay. Hey, could you open the glove box? Sure. There's a gun inside. Better take it with you. No! Look out! As Leon and Claire struggled against the zombie inside the police car, Wolfpack made their way inside the infested police department. They wiped out all the evidence they could find but couldn't locate Chief Irons, making their way outside and preparing for extraction. Seeing Leon's car crash, Wolfpack was immediately sent to investigate and discovered that Leon was a Raccoon City police officer, and command ordered his assassination. Find that cop and kill him!
I'm not one of those things. Stop shooting! The explosion had separated Leon and Claire, and they both made their way separately to the police station in order to meet up, as Claire survived through the zombie hordes and Leon escaped from Wolfpack. Some of the members of Wolfpack were beginning to suspect that Umbrella had no plans to extract them. By this time, Umbrella had taken complete advantage of the Raccoon City outbreak, deciding to unleash its bioweapons on the city in order to test out their capabilities and confident that their secrets were safe. As Wolfpack requested extraction, Umbrella dropped their deadly hunters within the city and they found themselves fighting against the very company that sent them there. Leon and Claire had made it to the police station as Umbrella started dropping their Mr. X series tyrants all over the city. Claire found Officer Marvin by himself, bleeding from the zombie bite he sustained earlier. Claire revealed who she was, and Marvin explained what had happened, as she realized that Chris wasn't there anymore. Marvin gave her a keycard that would open many of the doors in the police station, and while looking for Leon, she had her first encounter with one of Umbrella's liquors. While making her way through the station, Claire saw a young girl screaming for help. It was Sherry Birkin, William Birkin's daughter who had been hiding by herself in the police station this entire time. She ran away and Claire chased after her, horrified that a little girl was left alone in this chaos. As she got away, she finally ran into Leon. Claire, you made it! Yeah. Have you seen a little girl around here? Yeah, you just missed her. Who is she? I don't know. But it's too dangerous for her to stay here alone. Leon, I'll go look for her. You go and find us a way out of here. Of course. But before I forget, here's a radio. That way we can keep in touch if something comes up. Wolfpack was still fending off against the onslaught of hunters in the streets of Raccoon City. But after escaping the hunters, another Mr. X tyrant dropped in their location, attacking the team as they opened fire on the unstoppable monster, as they yelled at command for extraction. But their command continuously ignored their requests. Umbrella was a company that cared more about results than its own employees. Leon and Claire explored the police department looking for help and searching for Sherry, coming to the realization that everybody was dead. And Claire went back to help Marvin, but made a horrifying discovery. It was too late for him. Ah! 
Leon had made it to the underground parking garage and met Ada Wong, who thought Leon was a zombie. Wesker had sent her to find the G-Virus samples, and she was searching for a reporter named Ben Bertolucci, who became suspicious of Chief Irons. The Chief had him arrested and locked him in one of the police station cells, and Ada believed that he could provide leads to the G-Virus samples, but told Leon that she was actually just looking for her boyfriend, and Leon, completely unaware of her true motives, led her right to the jail cells. Ben? You told the city officials that you knew something about what's been going on, didn't you? I don't know anything. And even if I did, why would I want to tell you? Does anyone know where they put the key to this cell? I have it right here, officer. But I'm not about to leave this cell. Those zombies aren't the only things crawling around out there. What was that? Like I said, I'm not leaving this cell. Leon and Ada decided to work together, making their way near the sewers and separated to cover more ground. And Ada caught a glimpse of Sherry as the scared little girl ran away from her, dropping her locket that contained the G-sample. How cute. That little girl must have dropped this. I think I'll hold on to it for her. Ada went back to Leon and gave him supplies that she found after they separated, but unable to reach the hole she crawled up through, she promised to find him later, as Claire, still inside the police station, discovered Police Chief Iron's office and another young girl he had just murdered. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> I thought you were another one of those zombies. Are you Chief Irons? Yes, that's me. And just who are you? No, don't bother telling me. It makes no difference. You'll end up just like all the others. That's the mayor's daughter. I was told to look after her, but I failed miserably. Just look at her. She was a true beauty. Her skin nothing short of perfection. But it will soon putrefy and she will turn into a zombie within the hour like all the others. Please, I'd really like to be alone now. Disturbed by the chief's behavior, Claire left the office as Leon made his way back to the station. And Claire eventually returned to the chief's office, suspicious that he was hiding something, finding Sherry there and the chief gone. But she did discover a secret entrance behind the chief's desk, and concerned for Sherry's safety, told her to wait there for her, as she went inside and took the elevator down. William Birkin had implanted Chief Iron with the G larva, and the chief's end had finally come, as his insanity became apparent. <laughs> so you've made it this far. Not bad, girl. But I'm not letting anyone leave my town. Everyone's gonna die. Calm down, Chief. What happened? Shut up! You couldn't possibly understand what's happened. Those monsters from Umbrella have destroyed my beautiful town. But if I have to go, I'm going to take you with me. I just can't take the pain! The larva that escaped from his body grew quickly, just as it had when it exploded from the body of the Umbrella Researcher Monica, and Claire faced it to clear a path for her and chair. Now that it was safe, Claire went to get Sherry and promised to protect her as Leon was on the run from Mr. X Tyrant again. After escaping, he made his way back underground and heard Ben screaming from the jail cell as William Birkin attacked him. Ben! Can you still hear me? Come on, answer! Bitter irony. The chief of police, a co conspirator. Oh, 
Get that scum. Make him pay. The evidence Leon had now had completely implicated Umbrella in the outbreak. He rushed to the sewers to find Claire and Sherry so they could find a way out of the city. And the truth behind the outbreak had to come out. But William Birkin was in the area, and Leon ran right into him. Surviving the fall, Claire and Sherry witnessed Birkin passing by, looking for her. The monster instinctively searched for his daughter, in order to implant her with an embryo. Since she was a genetic match with him, the embryo would be sure to become a horrific creature like him if it came from her. But Sherry was washed away in the sewer, and was knocked unconscious, as Birkin finally found her. Echo Six had also made their way into the sewers, and fought their way through Umbrella Troop, sent in to protect the entrance to their secret lab. Claire found them and told them about Sherry, begging them to find her as she was somewhere in the sewers by herself, hopefully still alive. Lower your weapons, team. Fine, but you better not try anything funny. Identify yourself. My name's Claire Redfield. I'm looking for a little girl down here. Have you seen her? No, but you really think she'd survive down here? She's special. She survived this long on her own. Her name's Sherry Birkin. Please, keep an eye out for her. Echo Six. Sherry Birkin is the daughter of William Birkin, the Umbrella researcher who contacted us a week before this outbreak. He's disappeared since then, but his daughter might know something of his whereabouts. Help this woman find her. Roger. I'll take all the help I can get. And eventually they did find Sherry, now awake. Unknown to even Sherry herself, her father had infected her with a G-larva while she was unconscious, and the creature was slowly growing within her. Echo Six swore to protect her as they lighted her way with flares and annihilated any zombies in her path. As they took Birkin down, Echo Six discovered the entrance to the secret lab from the city hall map. And at this time, somewhere else in the sewers, Hunk, the leader of the USS Alpha team that was first sent to Birkin's lab, finally had made contact with Umbrella. He had somehow survived Birkin's attack and had secured samples of the G-Virus successfully, and remained alive during the outbreak. His reputation as Mr. Death, the Umbrella soldier that survives every mission, was well deserved, and his superiors instructed him to get to the roof of the Raccoon City Police Department for extraction. Once again, only you survived, Mr. Death. Roger that. Don't be late.
Mission accomplished. The survival rate was 4%, and valuable human resources were lost. But that is war. The mission objective takes priority over everything else. Holding to that principle is why I have never failed a mission. Leon and Ada had made it underground and ran into Annette Birkin as Ada chased her, needing to talk to her. <laughs> Ada! There's nothing here for you, thief! Ada! No! no! Farewell. Leon, why? You're losing a lot of blood. Don't move. I've got to remove the bullet. Who was that? She was about to kill you. That's my problem, not yours. Fine. Don't tell me. But you better start working with me here. Or we'll never make it out of this alive. Please, Ada. I need your help. I can't do this alone. You're right. I'll help you. Thanks. But first, we need to find the others. Don't die, Leon. I owe you. Leon followed her trail and found her shooting at something in the water. Sherry took a tram that led to a platform, believing it could be a way out of the city. Claire discovered that something was seriously wrong with Sherry as Birkin appeared stalking them again. Defeating him, Claire and Sherry ended up in Umbrella's secret lab, the same lab that Kevin and his group of survivors had previously been to and melted the ice from. Claire left Sherry in one of the rooms where she'd be safe and promised that she'd find a cure for her. Leon and Ada had also made it to the tram leading to the platform, but were attacked by Birkin, enraged and still in the area. Ada! Ada! Can you hear me? Come on, snap out of it! Platform stopped and Leon found an alternate way into Umbrella's lab, searching for Claire and Cherry. All the experiments Umbrella had been working on in secret were released. Infected workers and poisonous carnivorous plants roamed the area. As Leon searched for a way to escape and met Annette Birkin, revealing the truth about Ada, who he had become close to during the outbreak. Husband, I know what you're looking for. You came for the G virus, didn't you? But you never take it from me. This is my husband's legacy. 
Now, where's that spy you were working with earlier? You know who I'm talking about. What? You really don't know anything, do you? <laughs> You're so gullible. The only reason why she came here is to obtain the G-Virus. I discovered this when I did a background check on her. She specifically got close to John and became his girlfriend to get information about him. On the surface of Raccoon City, Wolfpack and a panic continuously yelled for extraction as they found themselves overwhelmed on the streets as Umbrella Command finally reached out to them, telling them that they would be extracted only if they succeeded in going to the underground lab that Leon and Claire had infiltrated, take out the survivors that had made it within. Angered by their superiors, Wolfpack reluctantly followed orders and made their way into the lab, becoming more and more distrustful of the company. The Umbrella Lab had become a war zone, and several parties were operating in different parts of the lab, including Echo 6 that had infiltrated it from another entrance. While searching for Claire, Mr. X once again found Leon. Just leave you behind. I'm just a woman who fell in love with you. Nothing more. Ada. No. Ada! Echo 6, not knowing that Leon and Claire were inside the facility, fought their way through the monsters inside, activating the self-destruct sequence. Soon, the entire lab would be destroyed. As Wolfpack heard the self-destruct sequence go off, they were ordered to go to the control room and find out why it was activated. This was one of Umbrella's most valuable labs, and losing it would be an intense loss for the company. Warning! Installation self-destruct sequence engaged. All personnel are to evacuate immediately. What the hell is going on? Why is the self-destruct sequence active? Get to that control room! Repeat. All personnel... As Leon was forced to leave Ada behind, self-destruct countdown continued. Claire contacted him, and they found each other once again. But she still needed to create the cure for Sherry. Claire told Leon to go get her so they can escape together on the emergency train while she went to go search for the cure. But before splitting up, they found Annette Birkin, mortally wounded. She is growing even stronger. If you don't stop this, Sherry will... Annette, please. We need to find the vaccine. The P4 lab on the bottom floor. Please, help Sherry. Tell her that even though I failed as a mother, I have always loved her. 
After Annette died, Claire rushed to get the cure finished, and Leon picked up Sherry, taking her to safety. And during their own escape, Echo-6 discovered a Mr. X tyrant being fused to the parasites that were meant to control them. Wolfpack realized that at this point there was no stopping the self-destruct sequence. They had to escape before the explosion, but the Mr. X tyrant that Leon and Ada defeated was still alive and more powerful than ever. All personnel are to evacuate immediately. Tyrant, Umbrella Command demanded that Wolfpack find Leon and ensure that he didn't escape the facility alive. Leon had too much information about Umbrella and was on the verge of escape. As Leon prepared the train, he had one final encounter with the Tyrant that had caused him so much trouble, still alive after the battle with Wolfpack. And while he fought the mutated Mr. X, Claire ran into Birkin, stronger than ever.
What the? What was that? Claire? Everything's all right. I'll go have a look. We're gonna be okay now, aren't we? <laughs> Sherry. I have something to tell you. About your mother. <laughs> the vaccine that saved you. It was from your mother. She loved you very much. Always has. Right up till the end. No, that's a lie. Mommy never. <laughs> Leon, Claire, and Sherry had escaped, but the nightmare was still not over. Wolfpack had gotten out of the lab successfully and chased them back into the city throughout the day. Echo 6 had also made it out, continuing to operate within the city, and received direct orders from command to extract Leon, Claire, and Sherry. The information they had was vital to put an end to Umbrella, and the team valiantly fought their way to Leon and Claire's location. But at the same time, Wolfpack had tracked them down, fighting the military, attempting to protect them. It was all-out war between the USS and the American military, and Wolfpack ultimately reached Leon, Claire, and Sherry. But still furious that Umbrella had abandoned them, they turned against the company, swearing to take them down from the inside, and allowed Echo-6 to take them. On your feet. Get over there. Move. Delta Team, what's your status? The targets have been apprehended. Eliminate them and bring us the girl. We can do that. But first we need to renegotiate our deal. What are you talking about? You left us for dead fighting your B.O.W.s. We want triple the original amount and an evac chopper sent to our location immediately. You must be out of your mind. We're not negotiating with you. Finish your mission. Finish it yourself. Consider our contract with Umbrella terminated. Then you can die along with Raccoon City. We'll take our chances. Why didn't you kill us? You weren't the leverage we thought you were. Umbrella's turned on us already. It's time we stab them in the back. What about Sherry? Keep her. We got other plans. Once we get out of this city, we're gonna gut Umbrella from the inside out. Six had them, and it seemed like their nightmare was almost over as they awaited extraction. But the parasite infected Mr. X tyrant they fought in the underground had escaped and was still alive as they engaged in a massive final battle against it.
for sugar. Glad we could help end this thing. It's not over yet. Umbrella has to pay for what they did here. I'll make sure the world sees them for who they really are. Good luck with that. Someone needs to fight that fight. What about you? Any post-apocalyptic plans? I still have to find my brother. Will you take care of Sherry? Of course we will. Leon, Claire, and Sherry had finally escaped Raccoon City, as Echo 6 had completed their objectives before heading out of the city behind them. But there were still some crucial survivors left inside of Raccoon. After being unconscious for almost two days, Jill finally awakened after her battle with Nemesis, as Carlos had stayed protecting her from zombie attacks. But they both realized that she had been infected by the T-Virus, and wouldn't make it out of the city alive unless a cure was found. Carlos, knowing that Umbrella basically ran the city, made it to the hospital, where he hoped to find something that would help Jill. I had no idea another guinea pig was still alive. What are you doing? Have you lost your mind? Sometimes it's easy to forget one's loyalties. Just like that traitor. You mean the guy who shot you? Yeah, you know him. The one with the gray hair and the ugly mug. That traitor! You mean Nikolai? Carlos searched the hospital and discovered that Umbrella had been using it for secret experiments with their Hunter Bioweapons program, and successfully found that Umbrella had developed a T-Virus cure that he could create in the lab. In successfully creating the cure, he rushed back to give it to Jill, but realized that Nikolai had planted bombs in the hospital. <sighs> He knew at this point that Nikolai was working for himself and was killing his own men in order to keep most of the profits for himself. He gave Jill the cure and she was healed from the infection. I'm sorry, Jill, but I've got to go take care of a few things. Oh, and bad news. Nikolai is still alive. Nikolai? Are you sure? Yes. I don't know how, but I do know that he is our enemy. Remember, don't trust him. Jill ran and made her way through the Raccoon City Cemetery, where a worm had been infected by the T-Virus and grew to an immense size. Eventually making her way to an Umbrella Waste Disposal Factory, Jill found Carlos and he revealed that the government was planning to launch a missile into Raccoon City in an effort to contain the infection. The entire city would be wiped out, along with any survivors still inside. The government was becoming more desperate and most of the military had already evacuated the city. The only solution left was to neutralize the entire area before the infection spread outside of the city's borders. While Jill made her way through the factory, Kevin and his group of survivors had ended up in a separate Umbrella factory their train linked to facility that was overrun by hunters where two Umbrella researchers were hiding. One of them reprogrammed a Mr. X tyrant to attack the hunters instead of them and implanted a bomb inside of it in case it turned against them. Kevin and his group knew their best bet to escape was with the Umbrella researchers and let the tyrant destroy the hunters, clearing a path for them. But eventually the tyrant proved to be uncontrollable. Extraordinary. I told you, there is nothing to...
After the tyrant lost control, Kevin was able to successfully get the remote for the bomb implanted in its head, and used it to seemingly kill the tyrant. And then he found the surviving Umbrella researcher, Linda, wounded, and Kevin vowed to get her out of the city safely. Linda knew that Umbrella had gone too far with their experiments this time, and her information could be used against the company. And as the city inched closer and closer to destruction, and the survivors made their way to the surface, the tyrant revealed itself to have survived now mutated from its previous injury. And as an Umbrella, UBCS Chopper was preparing to leave. With one of Umbrella's experiments, one of the latches became loose and it fell to the streets. This experiment, known as Nyx, was unleashed. underground parts of the city, Ada Wong was still alive, heavily injured but was able to escape the Umbrella Lab before it exploded, making her way through the sewers in an effort to get to the surface and establish contact with Wesker. Ada made her way to the Apple Inn where she was supposed to meet an Umbrella contact about the G-Virus sample, but discovered he that he had killed himself well and contacted that. Wesker for extraction. He was weak. Wesker. And you, Ada, you have also failed. Your actions in betraying us and helping that Leon fellow will have consequences for our organization. See this? It's a tissue fragment with Birkin's G-Virus. Well, despite some setbacks, you have proven your value to us. Ada knew that Wesker couldn't be trusted, but also knew that he needed her to escape with the sample. So she made her way through the streets before boarding a nearby helicopter and escaping the city. You can have it. You think I'm reckless? Don't you? You stole a computer core from your own company. I wouldn't exactly call that stable. <laughs> the people who go down in history as its heroes are never stable. Inside UMF-013 is all of the research data. With that, Umbrella will rise from the ashes. Kevin and his group successfully made it to a bridge where a military jeep was left and ready to go, with a route leading right out of the city. But they encountered the Nyx that was unleashed accidentally, as it merged with the Tyrant. Nyx was dead, and Kevin and his group jumped into the jeep and made their way to the outskirts of the city. The military and the UBCS had all evacuated, and Jill and Carlo still being pursued by the nemesis as the city's destruction was literally moments away. As Jill made her way outside, she realized that Nikolai had taken a helicopter and attacked her. That was the last remaining chopper, and Nikolai had escaped, leaving Carlos and Jill as the last remaining survivors within the city, with no way out. In a panic, Jill ran through the facility, looking for any possible escape route, but the nemesis found her again, but this time Jill had enough. It was time to fight back. Oh, my God. 
I'll give you stars. As Jill made it outside, Carlos rushed over and said he had found somebody looking for her in a chopper that knew her. It was Barry, having somehow survived the outbreak, stole a helicopter and rescued his close friend. The end of Raccoon City had arrived. Thanks, you saved us. I couldn't let you die. Is, is it you? Are you ready to finish this? It's coming! Yeah. It's the end. unfortunate turn of events. It seems that the President and the Federal Council have passed judgment over the civilians of Raccoon City. The President and Federal Council have ruled that the Bacalus Terminate operation is the best force of action for this extreme situation and have since executed. Based on that fact, Raccoon City has been literally wiped off the map. Current reports have the death toll surpassing the 100,000 mark. Our hearts go out to those poor civilians of Raccoon City. Join me next time for the Resident Evil Timeline Part 3, Umbrella's Downfall, where we'll explore an Umbrella Corporation on the run as the survivors of Raccoon City fight back and expose all of their secrets, and as the company crumbles from the inside, old enemies meet once again. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button with all of your strength. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any new content. You can follow me on social media or go into my community tab for updates. And for as little as a dollar a month, you can support the channel directly on Patreon. This is Fabian, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.